I had to beat him. I beat him two out of three. He read it. He, he read a great last race. Flip, we pushed so hard. There is no hard feelings on the on the championship. I remember following him into it, and I was like, ooh. People want to know about your relationship, and like I'll summarise it. It was amazing. He say 130, like 129.98. I was like. Yeah, oh. <laughs> I looked behind at your corner. I was like, this is a dream. I had to then concentrate to stay competitive. How he is is not how I am here. Very different people. In 2023, this man was involved in one of the most intense Bennett's British Superbike battles in many a year. He also extended his winning streak at the Northwest 200 to eight wins. For 2024, it's one man, one bike, one team. PBM Racing Team. And their goal? to win the Bennett's British Superbike Championship and continue that Northwest 200 winning streak. That's Glen Irwin, and in association with Ducati Preston, this is Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast. You've done this before. <laughs> <laughs> Glen, welcome to Off Track, mate. How are you? Oh, good, Dave. Hi. Thanks for having me. Uh, Pleasure. We should have done this last year, I think, and Holton Park we were going to do it, but... Yeah, you got busy with filming and stuff like that. Yeah, with, with a job on hand. You, thing, you, you had a bit of a job on last year, didn't you? <laughs> do you remember the first time we ever did a chat? I don't even remember where we were sitting, did we? We weren't. We'd done it over the, like a, a Zoom thing or something, didn't it? like Skype, yeah. 10 years ago. Is you just Yeah. Oh, my you, word. You were sat at home and you'd just signed for Gearlink. Gearlink Kawasaki. Yeah. yeah. So no, I, I do remember it vaguely. But I remember, oh, yeah, you've yeah, you slept since then. Yeah, banged my head a few times from then, haven't I? So, yeah, fair point. Yeah, bloody hell, a, lot, a lot's changed, yeah. And we haven't done changed. it in the meantime, so this is the first time on the new show, so thank Ten you. Ten years mate. later, I have three kids and a few British championship races. That's not been that bad, has it? It's, you've done all right for yourself, <laughs> It's been you? all right, I can't complain. No, not at all. We, we're down at Ducati Preston. Um, it's their open day, so a massive thank you to Ash, to Boothie, to Russ, to... Um, who's the little fellow with the glasses? Thinks he's funny. Uh, Wayne. What's his name? That's Wayne. Wayne. Thinks he's yeah. funny. And Foggy. Foggy's here, legend. Foggy, <laughs> Foggy, Foggy here as well. I really. Joe, uh, just on that, yeah. Boothie, fair play to Chris. Uh, Ducati Manchester Group. Obviously, the Ducati Preston, Glasgow, Dundee. Um, I think there's more than more than that. Stoke. He, uh, Stoke. He came on board as a personal sponsor. Um, we've done an event in Glasgow, and it kind of went from there. And you'll see them on my visor this year, and, and side clips. And he has been a dream to work with and um, so if you are a, a Ducati buyer or you're a, a bike buyer in general you know please do support him because the support he has given me and I really mean this we've done a deal and since then three sponsors have come on board uh, two of which are here today which has been really nice to met them and their, their kids and yeah Chris has been he's one of them guys he's you know and you'll come across especially in the racing world you'll get the tick 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 people and then you get the people that you scratch each other's back and we're both successful. And he is one of those. So very, very grateful uh, for what I have with Chris. Uh, thanks a million, Chris, because I know I am meant to be downstairs working for you, <laughs> doing a chat show. Um, and it's absolutely bolting out there. I'm hiding upstairs in an office uh, with Dave. So, yeah. Um, and yeah I thanks, And I don't Appreciate think Dave this. is paying you for my time either. So. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, Chris Chris has been mega. Like, we're not going to sit and bore you as plug, plug and sponsors flat out. We need to pay you for time. Look at this. There's a big board behind yeah, it. Yeah, right off. We're, we're all Ducati. <laughs> and they've given up. me a jacket yeah. as well. They, yeah. yeah, I'll have to hand it back. I'll, I will be handing yeah. it back before we yeah. leave. Yeah. I'm dressed up like Foggy. I have the same one as Foggy. <laughs> Foggy's a legend. Oh, it's you know, good to see him, isn't it? He's on good form. You when you meet someone, like, they say don't meet your heroes. and I think... In life, you automatically presume someone famous is a is a dick. You automatically do presume it, and people maybe see think that about me, and then the media, and hopefully they, they get a nice impression. Carl is so down to earth. Picked him up this morning. Lovely place where he lives. Class, absolutely lovely. Um, so down to earth, normal. And uh, what concerns me or scares me is I feel like I'm very I like him in many ways. So, <laughs> <laughs> but I wouldn't change that either because he's his character and I'm mine and. Um, yeah, a bit of a bond has started there again, and that's all three, Chris. Um, and hopefully, we'll see him uh, at least at Open Park, pretty superbikes. I don't think Carl comes to many, many races now, but no, he's, he's not really, he's not too fussed. We sat yeah. down with him back in November up at his place because I'm only half it's an hour at the other line, side, like a bit, don't they? Yeah, yeah, he's well under the radar and he's just happy doing his own thing, but he seems happy with life. And it's yeah. nice for him to come down. and There's, there's loads of people here outside at Ducati Preston. And he's actually making been rebranded. Big you don't call him Foggy now, you call him Froggy, but that's a story for another day. I'll let you ask him. So, <laughs> yeah, Fro Froggy might be coming along to support me at a few VSVs. That'd be nice. That'd be nice. <laughs> Hope he listens. <laughs> oh, he, he might. Uh, we'll, we'll drop him a copy of this, we'll tag him <laughs> in it and make sure it's all right, mate. 
2023 for me was one of the most intense BSB seasons I can remember in a long time. And even going right back, and we, we sat down with Jordan and Frank Jr. yesterday, and I was saying to them, is that even right at the very beginning, when the Birdman signed you and signed Tommy, everybody sat there going like, how long is this going to take? Both big, big characters in a completely different way. Talk to me about the, the 2023 season from your seat. It was absolutely amazing. Um, you know, obviously from a success point of view, we had 10 wins, uh, on team podiums, more wins and more podiums than, than anybody. Success at the Northwest 200 as well, which you know can't be forgotten. Continued over now at eight unbeaten superbike races there, and it was an amazing season. I, I never look at the championship and like I never judge it on finishing second in the championship. A lot of people are like oh, half a point. How do you feel? And like I say, I, I believe uh, for having to learn the bike and with very little testing. Remember, Silverstone test was wet. We didn't go to Donington test because it was minus five. Uh, Navarra test, we rid the old bike. So it was kind of straight into round one and, and we managed to win straight away. Um, I made a mistake at Knock Hill, made a technical mistake at uh, Donington Park early on. And from the mid season, when I had to start winning races and regrouping, I, I'd done that. And I feel I'd done everything right to uh, win the championship. Obviously, we know what happened at Donington, it's one of those things, it's racing. But no, I really enjoyed it and I think uh, it's funny because as a person, I could uh, go to the bar with any of my rivals, Tommy included, I could have a drink and or a bite to eat, whatever is probably a better thing to say, and race elbow to elbow with them the next day. But when I watch MotoGP, as much as that's very much my character, I see like, you know, Peko's very friendly with Bezeki and they're all friendly, which is great because I, I don't, I'm not a feud type person. I hate how it turned out with Tommy at the end of the year and it, that was not my side whatsoever. It was very much one person orchestrated at that. Um, but, to be part and to have that feud and that Glenn fans, Tommy fans and, in, and and the neutrals, I'm so grateful to be part of a championship like that because the fans get so in. I seen the demographic the other day and it's like viewing, viewing hours uh, or viewing uh, numbers of round one and it shows you every round and you get to Donington Park and there is this ridiculous spike and then you get the Brands hats and it goes even higher. So we done our job. As a, this is entertainment at the end of the day. We put a great show on. There is no hard feelings on the on the championship. Uh, I guess I I learned a lot. You know, in in that year, I probably understood that. You know, me and Tommy won't see eye to eye, and I say it again. It, it wasn't through. Like I always try to continue to be friendly with them. Uh, some people, you know, they're they're different. Whatever. It's not my cup of tea. Um, there's not much more. I don't want to get too sucked into it because. I'm a genuine person, I wear my heart in my sleeve. I never ever go out to do harm on anyone. I care about people, and I believe in the other side of the garage that, that wasn't the case. How uh, how deep do you want to go into that relationship while we sat here? Oh, you, can, you, you ask questions, I'll answer. You know, uh, like I say, um, there is no rivalry now, um, because if I'm sitting here now and I've created a rival for 2024, how can I know who my big opposition is going to be? It could be Tommy, it could be Andrea at Honda, it could be Kyle and Ryan, it could be Jason, it could be Lee, it could be all of them. I, like I said, I don't need to create a feud to uh, motivate. I'm very, very self-motivated. I'm motivated because I love... Uh, I often say I don't even know if I really like motorbikes. I just love the... Uh, <laughs> The competition, if I'm, if it was, uh, I don't play the Xbox anymore, it was a game of FIFA or Call of Duty, I have to win. And um, But I don't have to hit someone to do that. So you can ask, uh, you ask whatever you want. The one thing you'll get from me, you'll get honest answers. Um, you know, the people always look in the two sides. Uh, there was a massive, one thing I'd love to crack, you've probably seen the social media posts, we're going to address that because I've waited for a moment to address that. I thought it was going to be on uh, Chasing the Racing. <laughs> But I hadn't got over to do it, so we'll do it here because that was something that was a big defamation of my character and it, it hurt me because, well, we'll talk about it in a minute when, mm. whenever we want to get on to it. Well, I, I'm, I'm grateful for you sitting down with us today and it's, it's a busy day and, and I, I appreciate your honesty and you know I'm not going to throw you under the bus, so I will always make sure you're happy to ask to answer the questions first it's not my style to do the Paxman thing and go this, 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 yeah, this. Yeah, yeah. It's, um, I can only ask from what i saw at the from trackside from 
ac- across the season. And it, it came very apparent early if you were listening to circuit commentary, not so much the TV, but certainly the circuit commentary immediately after a race with Larry when the adrenaline's flowing. And I said this to, um, to Jordan and, and Frank Jr. yesterday, little barbs started appearing. And one said one, one said something else. And I'm kind of like listening to it. And I think it, Tommy made the, the comment about he'd ride through anybody, which I think was snap, wasn't it? Somewhere around there. And then at Knock Hill. I, Knock Hill was before snap. Uh, Knock Hill was before, wasn't it? So I forget when he there did is, that. There was nothing, but, there was nothing said till, I think there was something said by Tommy at Knock Hill after we had yeah, a, good, a good fight. In there the was history. something was about, and it, and it was, it was Knock Hill. Yeah. I remember when I heard it, it's like, they might have won the battle, but he hasn't won the war. Yeah, that was it. And then, that was it. And then, and, and then it just then suddenly clicked in my head. Then it drive like, through me. Then it ultimately declared all out war. That was uh, the point where oh. I can remember from Knock Hill. It's just remembering all the it circuit going, commentary. I, I was like, oh, go, here we go. I thought it was going to Iraq. <laughs> I thought we were serving. <laughs> oh, it was nonsense. Soap opera, soap opera. That's what it was. Yeah. But I guess I guess fans enjoyed it. Um, but we haven't had that for years. And do you know what? Like like I say, uh, I, everyone's different. So I, I'm i not sitting here uh, saying I dislike Tommy for, you know, how he is is not how I am here. Very different people. I, you know, I don't, like to create that feeling uh, I'm an honest person um, he maybe if he needs to feel like that it's fine him doing what he done because you have to do what is the best for you and if he had to create war and create this to motivate himself and and he won the championship and fair play to him it worked um, you know that being said I do believe he tried his hardest to throw it away with Alton Park and Donington and whatever else but listen <laughs> We could chat about that all day. I think uh, the one thing, you know, I guess there's no point getting madly in the the relationship uh, too much. Um, I I could sit and t- at any seat, I guess we were still chatting. Um, what hurt me and what, I guess, uh, I don't carry any hate or anything to him. Um, what, where there is a little bit of ill feeling. Um, there was a social media post one night, and this is... Uh, Really, really true, and it wound me up because I contacted uh, Harv at Honda, who I have an abundance of respect for. He really helped shape my career and my mentality, and really straightened uh, straightened me up as such. I was a little bit disappointed, um, and Harv knows me, and he'll, he'll hear this and he'll probably go, oh, "Glenn, shut up!" But you know, I contacted him about this because I knew he also knew the the truth behind it um, and I wanted him to rectify it I wanted him to get Tommy to remove uh, a post he put in social media so really this gives me I guess this opportunity this isn't someone quoting me and then writing down and and mixing and stirring it you know this is this is exactly as what happened Andrew's testing in uh, Hareth with Honda Um, Tommy and Andrew new team obviously for Tommy and he, uh, we all know he was going to run number one next year and absolutely fair play. The, the most special thing you can ever do. And, you know, again, I, I applaud him for doing it because a lot of people don't do it. And the boys were winding him up, as in his team, not me. The Honda lads, they're all having a bit of crack. It's banter. Like, this is race teams. I know how it works. That I was going to run 46. Now, this is, the first, this is news to me. Hey, I, I would never change away from two unless I can uh, win the championship and I can get one. So Andrew says to me, oh, like, I was like, well, how's testing going usual? You know, all good, bit of crack. Just, he's my brother. I, I care about him greatly. And I just, we're addicted to lap times, aren't we? Like, how are you getting on? And he's like, oh, good, good the crack's good. The Ryan didn't tell me up that you're going to be number 46. So I want to make one thing clear. I'll, no, I'll continue the story and then I'll make it clear. I rang uh, Andrew from Blackwater Graphics, who would do like logos and stuff. Like he can make a logo for you yesterday if you ask him today. I'd like to bang, logo done. So obviously there was no news about my future, right? So I said, Andrew, can you make my logo like a Glen Irwin logo, hash 46? And, and just do that for me. Because I'm playing to the wind up that I've been informed about. And they're at news coming soon. So three, four hours later, you know, message people, ha ha, LOL, all this. And I get one message that went into an Instagram request folder. So obviously someone I don't follow. And when I opened it, it was like you're disrespectful, F and C and this and that and all the nearly all the swear words in the dictionary. I thought, whoa, like 
it's a bit of crack. And then, to be and to be fair, he said, you don't know what the number 46 means to the Bridewell family after Ollie. And I thought, oh my God. I, and I'll make this clear, and you people can create an opinion on this because everyone's entitled to it. I grew up in motocross. I grew up in short circuits when my dad was racing in Joey's era. Then I grew up in motocross. We didn't, uh, be, I don't even know what channel BSB was on. Was it even on TV back? Like, it, it wasn't when... When all these accidents happened, I wasn't at one with the BSB. I couldn't have told you what number anyone was. I don't even know if it was Johnny Ray. Johnny Ray was maybe four, because he went out with my cousin. I couldn't have told you what number anyone was. So once this guy says about that, I went, oh my God. And to make it clear, I have stood on the podium multiple times with Tommy this year when he's won a race and I haven't. And I absolutely love seeing him. It's... It, even nearly makes me emotional now because I, I raced with Andrew and it must be the worst thing in the world what they as a family went through. And I would never wish that upon anyone. And I've seen him, you know, talking to Ollie as he does. I've seen him on the grid, but more special when he wins a race. And I'm there in second and I'm like, you know, I'm, I'm happy for this guy. Because that is, like, mate, it's when you're standing there on the... It's cool maybe for you guys looking, but when you're there and on it, you feel it. You feel that nearly, like, tremble. So I've always showed nothing but respect, as anyone should. I would never ever reference or or the, you can't joke about anything. The guy is that's not even in question. So I rang Andrew and said, Andrew, I didn't know that was Ollie's number, and he he goes, No, no, I know. And he said to Tommy, and Tommy knew I didn't know it was Ollie's number. That that is an absolute fact, one hundred percent fact. So I tried to ring him. There was no answer, but he knew anyway. And everything was cool. He gets home after the test, maybe home to his wife, whatever. And uh, obviously, maybe maybe someone has a, an input in Tommy, I don't know. And a screen grab goes up of my post. And I can remember, you know, I can confirm after speaking to Stuart Higgs, uh, the 46 that I run in in memory of my brother, as if Glenn knows I run that in memory of my brother, will not be given to any other rider, it will be kept for me. And he knew what he'd done, that is... So they get hurt like you can probably hear the anger me it hurt me so much i lost every bit of respect i had for him like i said i don't hate him because carrying resentment to anyone won't help me align to where i want to go in my career he pulled a dirty trick to me that sums up who he really is and that's where the relationship ends and it will never resume and now you know the truth i know that you everyone to make their own opinion on that it's very hurtful that's a difficult thing oh, what it's what i was expecting but to hear it Hi. is is even more powerful in that sense yeah, I mean, because I, I it, feel it's not, something feel... that shouldn't have got out once yeah, well, you understand it and where where it's pointed to i, I genuinely didn't expect we'd go down this road, i know but, it's but, grand because look you, everyone wants but to I people know, need to know people love the people want to know about your relationship and like I'll summarise it, it was amazing. I am so happy to have had that be part of a championship that had like the Rossi Biazzi, the Rossi Gibbernoy, whatever. And I got the experience that. And it was class for the series it was class. They got more people in the gate. I hope they made a shitload of money. <laughs> it's good for all of us going forward. The one thing that was wrong was that derogatory it was like defamation of character because that is not who I am. I, I'm quite a soft person. Like I get emotional quite easy. That hurt me. Um, that 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 hurt me. It was a big lie, and it made me here. If I read that, it made me look like a complete dick. I had a sponsor that was going to not sponsor me because they're like, I'm not in the soap opera. Yeah, that's when it's not you only know, on a personal it, level, but a professional level yeah. as well. It's, it's like, right across the board. I was like, I need, you need to let me explain. And these these fans, anyway. are, they're, they're, us fans, I'm, I'm still a fan of the sport all day long, <laughs> even though I get to do this and, and the work that we've done in the paddock, I'm still a fan of the sport. And while everybody can't get on, to to find things like that makes it really difficult because we don't tend to have that in BSB. Yeah. Not everybody can get on. Everybody's a big character. Everybody God, carries God, an ego. Rivals. You have to to do what you and do. Me and Tommy are probably two of the biggest characters, like as you said. No. And that is like it's good, really? isn't it? Because like he's like I'm loud, he's loud. I speak my mind, he speaks his mind. And do you know what is funny, right? But right up until that, because that like I say that moment, and you can never say never. Maybe we can re reconcile in, in some way, but. 
I, I, I genuinely liked him when we went pre-season testing and I travelled in the car with him and Stacey and he just says it how it is and I was like, fuck, we're so similar. And yeah, and I learned a lot as a bike rider. Incredible. Um, the, his experience in the Ducati helped me a lot. Very good with some of the techniques that it's like time on the Ducati and, and that really helped fast track me. It, it made me who I was in the second half of the season because I could see what he was doing and yeah, grateful for what I learned from him. It's going to help me uh, going forward and uh, where we hopefully, you know, go and to get this championship um, and some of what I learned from Tommy will play a part in that and I'd be, I'd be ignorant to not acknowledge that. One thing that I'd like to ask, and thank you for that, Glenn. No, you're grand. Thank you, mate. I appreciate that. Um, Let's talk about something else. <laughs> yeah, no, I, my, uh, the last three rounds, and this is about you now, they're not about the relationship. <laughs> yeah. This is this is you. I found you fascinating on many levels last year. There were, I'll be, I'll match your honesty. There were things that I saw that I didn't like, but that was the heat of racing, okay? But that doesn't, change who you are okay we were stood at the bottom of the melbourne loop and how upset you were go even as far as the toilets i'm like oh <laughs> okay but fully understandable yeah under the circumstances but there were the and i spoke to wit about this as well on the you there was a massive practicing of gratitude last year and mindfulness and there's one point on the grid it was alton park that wit, wit said something to you no it'll be what it'll be and i'm not going to do your accent and offend you <laughs> <laughs> it'll be what it'll be way. the stars will align it'll be like yeah. we know all that tell us something different and like you were trying so hard to keep a level last year and try and maintain that things went a little bit wrong at alton park in the post-race press conference that was taken out of context but for you, what was your approach to those last three rounds? Yeah, I don't feel like any of it went wrong. Um, Alton Park was, again, it was at the, the Eurosport interview. And I, my comments were took out of context. Yeah, exactly. So like, they were took wrong by another party, let's say. And there was a bit of verbal exchange. Um, I worked uh, like with anyone in BSB has always been talented. You've got the talent. Um, I had a bit of a coloured past, let's say, um, you know, with some, you know, maybe focus, application. I was trained hard, but, you know, I, I made mistakes in life and I had some uh, issues, problems, addictions, you know, different different things that, you know, I, I don't even like to use the word had because you always say have because you don't want to become complacent and they come back. So I, I feel like I held... I held my career back for a long way, you know, I riddled myself with anxiety and, and different things. And I found a way, um, and one of the things I want to change about myself this year, in 2024, is to actually give less away. So I'm probably not going to tell you as much, uh, <laughs> you know, so you touched on it. Yeah, I'm a big manifester. Um, I love my meditating. I love my journal. And I love I love writing my future. You know, like people could look and go, but he doesn't have what he writes down, he has. But, you know, I'm really, really into that. Um, it work for some people. Some people think it's do lally. I would have thought it was do lally three years ago. And I genuinely, uh, the word it may have come across. I was trying hard. I wasn't trying hard to be in that way. Um, it's something I developed a, a big passion for in life. Um, something that I think uh, you, you said it. Practicing mindfulness. Why do you do it? Well, it helps you take control of your thoughts, especially in the, the heat of the battle. Um, and the heat of the battle to us is on track. The stuff off track that we're humans, we're always going to say silly things, you know, and you regret it two minutes later. Flip sake, well, mate, we've, <laughs> I've done it a lifetime. Um, but on track, what really pleases me, uh, when it came to crunch time, we didn't make a mistake at Alton. We went to, basically, I needed to perform from Thruxton. We, you and my say we beat Tommy, this isn't in a rivalry, right? he was my championship rival. We beat him three out of three there. Went to Cadwell where he is phenomenal. I had to beat him. I beat him two out of three. He read it. He he read a great last race. Flip. We pushed so hard. Oh, I remember Tommy losing the front of the gear snack. A fair play on the last lap, and he, and like I should have gave up by then finished second because you can't even. They're not going to pass anyone at that level before the finish line. You can't pass from Mansfield onwards. Well, maybe that first chicane, but it's tight. Oh, it was tight, and he defended well. I lost the front at the bottom of the mountain, still pushing, but where was he? I wasn't even going to pass him <laughs> after that. 
that was an amazing race. We got two out of three there. We got two out of three at Oakland Park, kept ourselves together. We were incredible at Donington Park in terms of practice pace. The race where the incident happened was raining. I know uh, it looked like we were going so slow at the front, but when you're the first bike when the track when the track's raining, you don't know what the level is. If there's uh, ten bikes in front of you and they're going slow, well, you can go slightly faster than slow, and you can ride the front. And that's what Tommy done, and he had to do it. And fair play, he done it. But again, we we kept our head. The accident at Donington, I I wasn't through any pressure or crumbling. I went to Brands Hatch and I had a task and I'd done everything I could do. If we could change one thing, the passing race one, I would say if that had a reversed, it would have meant Sunday would have, could have come into my hands. Done what I'd done on Sunday would have been enough, but I was trying to pass on a scale electric sort of line and it was damp and it was on the damp and it was, uh, it also came from about 17th in the grid at a really bad wet qualifying, but again, I felt like I handled myself um, and it's funny because you go away over winter and you switch off a bit from all that and and then now you're like, I need to get into that mindset I was in last year. And it's just building and we're getting back into it. And I'm doing my things. I'm not saying much more on it because you don't, you don't, uh, look, people could listen and go, I'm like, I'm not even going to try that, whether it works. But I felt like for the first time in my life, and I'm certainly not perfect, that I had full control of my thoughts and, uh, and my emotions. Because you talked about that it was such an intense championship. And I have let myself down in other years that were nowhere near as intense and much uh, where you it would have been easier to control yourself and I didn't whereas now it was like say potentially a year it was hard to control yourself and I felt like I'd done it um, like I say I, mean, I have no resentment to last year I, oh, I, was, I loved that championship it wasn't just me and Tommy there was Kyle Ryan Jason was in there at times Leon was in there Brooksy won a couple of races early on Um Lee Bob, you know, some super rides in the Kawasaki. The young lads at Thruxton, all, you know, Max it's funny, Charlie. they all wake up and then they go, <laughs> they, all, they think they all went to Cadwell and landed, and Charlie landed in his head, Max landed in his yeah. head. It's, but them guys have come. Their, their day will absolutely come. BSB is ruthless. I don't feel like I'm anywhere near my level yet. I feel I'm only getting better and better. The job's changed. We eat so healthy, we train so hard. The longevity of the sport is different than what it was 10 years ago. Um, can you win British Super Bike races into your 40s? Absolutely. If you've got the hunger, the passion, the dedication. I, uh, and I mean this, I love what I do now more than I've ever done it. And I credit my dad and my upbringing a lot because we were always given the opportunity, but we were never burnt out. But I think if I'm being brutally honest, I think it's because I, I sabotaged my, my career, my mental health for you know a large number of years that now I'm like free from that. I can really enjoy racing and I can show people what I can do on a bike and I couldn't do it without the team. The team have been absolutely oh, phenomenal last year and, you know, the one thing I would change about 2023 was, you know, if the, the Birdman just could have hung around and, you know, we, we know it was tough and what he went through was really difficult and, you know, if, if to be what was to be, if he just could have even got to Brands Hatch and uh, he went out and signed, I guess, the dream signing, the 2-3 the in the championship from the year before and, he was shrewd, it was a big decision and fair as Jordan said, that was her dad's success last year. He picked the team, he done this, but now we go and continue and we, we, we look at going one step better for me. Let's talk about twenty twenty four. Congratulations on signing the new deal. Finally. Thank you. The ink isn't even dry yet. I don't think <laughs> it was only <laughs> last what day is this? This is uh, Saturday Saturday. it was done on Monday. Yeah. Monday, yeah, so it really was late. PBM racing team. Yeah. PBM, uh what two point oh, as Jordan yeah. said, yeah, on the show last time. What's your thoughts? Really excited. Um, look, it's very much unchanged in terms of the technical aspect. Crew chief, electronic engineer, mechanics, tire technician is pretty much or maybe a change or two. But the the main cog is is there. Uh, team manager Johnny Moe have a great relationship. Used to be my crew chief. Um, many of the team sponsors, you know, Bruce from Hager, they're all, they're all still there. Um, Jordan and Frank have stepped in. I see a lot of Paul in both of them, and you know I know their their mum Karen as well. And you know she's a she's a lovely lady too. And I think uh, Jordan and Frank having the blend of their mum and their dad to me, there's discipline there. There's uh, the addiction to winning, you know for for sure. And I think there couldn't be better team bosses to. Not many team bosses or many people could step into the role of being a team boss at PBM after Paul Bird 
and the only two people that could honestly probably do it is his children. So, yeah, like I say, I do practice gratitude a lot and I use the word a lot. I never used to use it. I am very grateful that they decided to continue and continue with me. One man team, something new for me. A uh, little glimpse of it in the past in my early super sport days. It always worked. Uh, you know, the way I say it, I'll just be completely honest. If uh, they decide to put their eggs in my basket and I'm this rider that can win the odd British Superbike race, you know your talent's good enough to win the championship, but you haven't just shown you can do it consistently or won 10 races in a year, you're going to feel under pressure. Right? I know what I can do, but I haven't really done it and they want me to do it. Ooh, this is pressure. I know what they want me to do. I know what I can do. Statistically, what we done last year, percentage of wins, podiums, what we achieved at Northwest, it's all been done. You know, the championship was ever so close. It could have went either way. And can we go and do it this year? Of course we can. There is nowhere else I'd rather be. There, there was loads of rumours. There was a good offer from America. It's, it wasn't a lie. But I'm a family man of three young kids. I, love, I tell everyone, BSB, fly over Thursday morning. I'm home on a Sunday night. If I'm lucky, the Indian's still open. I love a cheap meal on a Sunday <laughs> yeah. night. Me and Andy and Wesley and Nicky Coates. And sometimes Laura's still up. Me, I'll eat a big Indian. And then you regret it. You're sitting busted like on a sofa like, oh, <laughs> mouth's dry. Wake up three in the morning. Not much caffeine in you on Sunday. I'm sitting watching the racing back in Eurosport. <laughs> and I, I love what I have. I, it gets, I'm allowed to do the Northwest. If you said to me, World your bag champion? I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> part two here we go <laughs> slight interruption Glenn had to go down on stage and do um, a little chat for Ducati Preston um, alongside Foggy so welcome back mate thank you for coming back and not legging it out the gate cheers mate it's bloody freezing it's out there and <laughs> this room was cold earlier but now this room feels like a sauna, like a sauna now, it, it actually feels like it could snow today but yeah so to continue where I left off I was just saying uh, you know the career I have uh, BSB Northwest, like if you said to me, Glenn, you can go to World Superbike. Look, of course, if Factory Ducati came calling you, of course you're going to go. But being a, a World Superbike rider on something that cannot fight deeper into the top 10 doesn't interest me. Whereas being a British Superbike, the potential to be a champion and the potential to win some international road races at Northwest, I love my career. I absolutely love it, you know, it's it's perfect for me. I don't know if it's because I'm Irish and we have a deep connection with road racing, um, but this career has allowed me, when I say this career, I mean being a British superbike rider has allowed me to tick off the Mackay GP, to win it, uh, become the fastest ever person around it, to make my debut at the Ulster Grand Prix and to get a double podium on a 600 along with the late William Dunlop and Lee Johnson. Um, to get success at Northwest, it's allowed me, and well, I keep forgetting, I'm, I'm the fastest ever newcomer to Hellman TT, so yeah, PSB has given me a great career, and it's allowed me to, to uh, be different, you know, as we said before, it is a wee bit different what I do, and I love it, man. One thing, <coughs> let's talk about road racing. There's, there's, we'll talk about the Northwest in a second, but I want to talk about the TT. Your debut was incredible. With the right team around you, with the support of John McGuinness and Harv and Honda, you couldn't really have been better placed to make your debut with, uh, around that course. There's a question I want to ask at the end, and it's up to you whether you answer it, but tell me about your experiences and, and finding your way around the TT and building to that. You know, the, the TT experience, it started from the classroom, let's say. The YouTube laps, uh, the game, oh, countless hours spent in the game, um, the trips over, the hire car that can't do more than 40 mile an hour climbing up from the gooseneck. You know, it's, it's do you know what I mean? Like you're like, going nowhere. Laps in Lamborghinis, uh, that James, a uh, good mate of mine, owns 1886. I'm sure everyone knows 1886 is where you go to have a good night in the Isle of Man. Um, laps in Ferrari, laps with Hickman, laps with McGuinness, PR events with. You know, McGinn or John and Honda and laps with Milky, the all them people laps with like even riders like Mikey Evans and that, good Isle of Man riders, people that I'm friendly with, I've ridden motocross with. They were Connor Commons. There was so much when India I had this notepad. I still have it. Uh, Laura's kept it for me and 
I, I believe anyone that writes down what they're learning will like ingrain it into them. And I would make like each lap I done with each person into like a multi-page spread. And I could go right, Connor Cummins, turn three, he said this, Hickman said that. And you kind of make a, well, the majority said that. So that would be this, this strong point. It was good. I felt like uh, like I could go in the morning and I could tell you everything about the course because I, so, I got so obsessed with it. But why do you get obsessed? Well, you're doing the Isle of Man TT and you're a motorbike rider. So let's think, we ride motorbikes because we like being competitive. We touched on that already. It's, it's the addiction to be successful. You know, it's not, oh, this is good crack flying around. It's the, you may win or you may win. You know, in my case, it wasn't about winning year one, but you win uh, as in you achieve something like I achieved. That, that was like a mini win as such. Um, then you also want to be safe. So the more homework you do, the faster you're going to be and the safer you're going to be. And, and, that's, uh, and that's really what it was. Uh, you know, yeah, having John as a teammate, it was amazing. More so to see him up close as uh, experiencing his 100th start. Yes, John was able to tell me loads, but and, and John would probably say as well, as well, it's me on the bike. You could tell somebody everything about the TT. Once you put them on a bike and you're whizzing by lampposts and trees and blind corners and sun that you can't see and dump patches and wildlife flying about, it really doesn't matter what many people have said other than take, take it in and put it in there, but it, you're on the bike. So I feel like the Honda team, Harv was great at controlling, uh, you know, we're not targeting fastest newcomer. You're going to get asked that all the time. We're going to ignore it. We're not getting sucked into it. And I'm really grateful for that because we, we didn't. We didn't get into what you think you can achieve. I'll, I'll be honest. I remember Hickman sent to me in the NEC um, the year before. It would have been the end of 2021 because obviously the COVID delay, etc. He said, you'll do 133 in your debut. 132. <laughs> and it, it's funny. I believe if I had him in my debut this year because the track was ultra fast, we would have been like 132, 133. The year I done made my debut, and people listen to this and go, oh, you can't do that in your debut. But let's remember, Hickman, they were just about 133, maybe even high 132s. I was 129.98 or whatever. Like, I was nearly 130 on a year. Like, people like guys that went back last year that were a mile an hour slower than me were doing like 131 last year. The resurfacing yeah, Solby track, from Ginger so Hall. Much it's faster. Changed Speed a lot, traps hasn't like it? 15 mile an hour quicker down Solby. Yeah. So, that, uh, but that's just luck of the draw. Um, they're little things. That's a competitive uh, beast coming out of me. Like, <laughs> you know, I could have done that, could have done this, but look, I had a, a break of TT in the two parts. The practice week, I absolutely had an amazing time. Weather was good, uh, no pressure, no pressure all, all, all fortnight anyway, but quicker, 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 quicker. My last lap of practice, uh, Lee Johnson passed me. So it must have been somewhere around Brandeis Hillbury and I managed to tag in and get a full Nick slap behind him and it was like 128.7 and that was in practice and that was a good lap and what I learned was Lee was so quick in the areas that were so dangerous and oh big they have something I don't have like Northwest I ride all them dangerous areas like where uh, you know where Malachi's incident was and that God rest him uh, I'm not that fast in them areas and where I feel I can short circuit it, I probably use my ability. And I remember following Lee and from Grebe Castle, oh my word, big left, right, big wall on the outside of you, big dip of a compression. Oh, I remember following him into it and I was like, oh, he just turned in so early, so committed. Trust, I guess that's just what they do to be a TT winner. I don't have it. You know, I admire them more from, not more from, I admire them anyway, but when you see seeing is believing. The lean angle, the commitment, the, whew, maybe they, maybe they're just prepared to, they're prepared to go to that limit. And I lost so much time. Again, the bit back at Greba Bridge by Ballacrean, which is a crossroads. So if you get your braking wrong, you just go straight on. I must've took about 12 bike lengths out of them on the brakes and I was right back on them in the Glen Helm. And that's how I wanted to ride it, and that's how I read it. Over a course of a lap, obviously that would that we string would break a bit more, and, and Lee would pull away. But that was that. I remember following Dan Needham through a set in the Northwest and the Coast Road as well, and it frightened me. And it's just not something I'm prepared to do. Um, but I loved it. I came to Superbike Race One, 
Um, I'm not going to lie, as much as it wasn't about records, and you, my last lap, was pretty good, but you're flying about on your own. And you don't really, you know, like, you're not using a dot the timer, are you up, are you down? And I came in, and I could tell there was all this mad clapping and all. I was like, I must have done it. I was like, they're breaking you, come record. Like, yeah, you broke it. And I was like, please say 130. And they're like, 129.98. I was like, yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was uh, like, but look, of course, I was in one piece. It was great. And that was amazing. From then, the TT turned. The the new format, So, which you would think would help you every morning then, even when superbikes didn't have a race because I was only in the superbike class and the stalker, to be fair. Uh, so I was only in a big bike you have these new practice laps but it rained like every night on race uh, week two and you're like what i found was mad you're on the grid and they're like damp patch at glen helen so someone said to me glen where's glen helen well obviously there's glen helen one and two but glen helen is primarily from ballycrean to i guess uh crunk body straight yeah that's where you come out so there, when yeah. they say damp pads it's like <laughs> where the hell is the damp pads so you've got two ways are you going to, and again, I admire them how to do it because I know Michael Dunlop, my brother watched at Hillbury on a 600 race and there was dump at Hillbury and they know where the dump is and he was full scale committed. Him and Hickman, Andrew talks about, he goes, Glenn, they, they know where to be when there's dump and they didn't rule. I get to Balacrian and I start riding like I'm going to Asda <laughs> and it's only a practice out, so it doesn't even matter what you do. By the time I get the crunk of audio, I'm like, right, I've seen the wet patches, obviously didn't hit them, it didn't crash. I think my tires are cold now. I went that slow. So then I'm completely out of rhythm. Do you know what I mean? Like, and then you look behind you and I started to lose momentum. Now at the same time, we obviously had one of the worst weeks ever for, for yeah. fatalities and that was uh, mounting on me. Um, there was a, not pressure, there was a huge uh, demand and pressure from media of commitments required for me in that fortnight. And even at breakfast, we had to have this camera turned on in the house. And, you know, I'm not, I'll just say it how it is. And I know all the lads think it, because John, you know, I remember saying to John, we had a sort of bit of a private conversation. And they were saying, look, I'm the same as you. I've been thinking this every year. And I was eating breakfast with Freddie and camera's catching you. Like, is this cat's capturing my last breakfast for Freddie? And, can I guarantee, like nobody can guarantee anyone they're having dinner tonight because the world works in funny ways, but it's just how I think. And I, I think it's cause I'm a father of not just one child, two childs. At this time, there was a third one, I think, where it was maybe pregnant with Phoebe. Yeah. Um, and I, I just couldn't even guarantee I was having dinner with them. I was finding it hard. It was getting harder and harder. Senior was meant to be on Friday. Wind was horrendous. It was delayed to Saturday. Wind was no better. I get, blue, I get blue, if it was a short circuit, we would not have been racing. Mm. I'm telling you now, it was like these Silverstone tests we've done where we've had the crazy wind a few times. We would not have been racing. Now, I'm not complaining because I absolutely loved it. <laughs> and it was funny. In the sectors, uh, kind of two Ramsey, I improved. Yeah. So my ID lap time was actually like 130.7 mile an hour over the two races on the mountain. Oh my God, uh, coming down into 32nd. The wind took me in lap one from the inside of the track not to the white line, as I know it might be crossing, but it moved me to the white line. I knew I wasn't moving any further. I rolled off lap two for it, and it still took me to the white line. It was nuts. Now on my last lap, my clutch basket, uh, Honda used to have a problem with like, warping them, so I actually could have continued, but it makes you feel like your rear wheel's square. You're getting this huge judder. And it pulled in, and a third from Brandish, uh, Hillbury, started to roll off because it was getting worse. And I came in for the pit stop and I rolled down into it. Didn't even race into the pit stop. I didn't even use the pit lane limiter or anything like that. It was turn. And that lap was still like 128, six or something. You know, could we have went on to win TT races? I do believe even with my style and how I ride a road race and taking less risk than others, but gaining with your ability in safer areas. I do believe over time, the ability, my natural biking ability could win a race. And do I have what them guys have? And that's, uh, you know, one people saying he's just said he came in when he didn't. The answer is I don't have what they have. I respect them absolutely hugely. It's a talent alone to be able to shut off from reality, I guess. To be, per like, I don't know TT, but I wasn't prepared to die. And I think them guys are. And <laughs> you have to admire it, because it death scares the hell out of me and, fuck. Oh mental place loved it is it worth it you don't do it for money because i didn't get a penny of start money and that will surprise everyone i did not get do you know what i got 1100 quid of prize money for doing the out of man tt 
Eleven hundred quid. Unreal. No, how come no start money? Uh, don't know. Look, I was paid by Honda for my contract at road racing, but as they said, we are not paying you to do a TT because you're a Northwest winner. You're paid, and you're not you're not talking big money at all. BSB is where you earn your money. I think uh, Northwest got five hundred quid my first year. Five hundred quid. So again, it was similar, and then you're in your way. So I guess, I guess it comes, but nah, not worth it. That's incredible. Not worth it, is it? Dude. Hickman makes a fortune, look, of course. Yeah, John's Pum. made well over yeah, the years. John. So there's a great career to be made in it. But if you want to push that The thing that is, far. I have a career. Yeah. So 100%. I earn money without having to do, let's say, a real job. Yeah. And, it, and we're very lucky and fortunate with what we do and what we get. So I guess it makes it easier for me to walk away. If them guys have their careers road racing, they can't walk away and still earn the money. They have to. So they're in that, like... It's like a limbo land, isn't it? Oh, they have to do it. You, you and for that, to do it. I don't envy them. No. Because I was able to make a good decision. But you did it because you wanted but to. But I love it. Because you had to. Bloody hell, like Dean Harrison, lo- love him the bits as a rider and as a person. Peter Hickman, same. Michael Dunlop, amazing. Been through so much. How he recovered this year. Mm. Lee, you know, been through a lot with you know, his father and everything. And again, he's a father and he's went and won 600 races there. Connor, look where he's, I hate heights. I'm not joking. You. I hate heights. <laughs> and I know I was really quick in the mountain because it's quite short circuity. Yeah. You see the veranda, especially, <laughs> and the 33rd, I was never for crashing the millionaires. I am pet. See, if I was Connor Collins, I'd have died by blackout. I'd have blacked out. Even though the injuries may, may not, I'd have blacked out. I hate heights. <laughs> I love the course on the mountain. Fuck. Every oh. short circuit rider does that, doesn't they? Steve yeah, Plater. You can see he held the corners. He held that sector time. I think like some of the sectors the mountain, something. you're only like a second off Hickey in the last one and yeah. two seconds, you know, in the majority of the mountain. Ginger Holder Ramsey. Oh my God. Like a motor, like, oh, they told me it would be bumpy. Mate, you can't even <laughs> the thing wah, 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 wah. and they've re- but they've resurfaced that now, haven't they? Which helps they, with the one thirty part uh, of it. Solby, which again, Solby, mate, you can't see you going. Wah, 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 wah. Should be two hundred mile an hour. You're doing one hundred and eighty because you're like, wah, wah. I know you're looking at the end of the trees. There's light. Look, look at the light. Look at the light. Wah, wah. When you get to the light, you're at the kink at the end, and you can see, and it's smooth, and you slow down for Solby Bridge. Then you get by Ginger Hall and Say it goes, that again out loud. I mean, seriously, listen to what you're saying about this. I know it's not, isn't it? Ah, it's, it's berserk. But there is some parts, and again, like Union Mill is very dangerous. Sets and Rotor, I loved it. I was good through it. You know, loved Grebe as much as you were know, saying Lee was incredible. Loved Grebe, loved Grebe Bridge, loved Gorse Lee. Bigger That's fast. Hunter. That's a big balls corner. Look, 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 I loved it. I don't talk bad of the TT. It just wasn't for me, I think, because of my situation. Where I am in life, I have a career. I just no need to do it. I didn't do it for money. I satisfied myself. I satisfied myself. I ticked it off. I believe the year I made my debut in made it tough for me to continue because of everything that happened. And Paul Bird, when I went to sign the contract with him, this is, so why am I not at the TT? Well, we find it hard to make big decisions as riders. It's easier to go with the flu. And he said, Glenn, thoughts on the TT? And I said, Paul, take it or leave it. And he went, good, because you're not doing it. And we shook hands. And in that moment, it was like, Honestly, and that's that is only when I knew I didn't want to do it because he made the decision for me, and I was like, Yes, because <laughs> you do things to please people in life, and we shouldn't. 100%. We we're are all people guilty pleasers, of it. aren't we? I had a deal with Honda, Honda put a lot of commitment in, a lot of time. There was never a gun held in my head. Like I say, Harv, Neil Fletcher, they were amazing, the whole team was amazing. But they commit it, and you feel, Well, they've done this, so I have to do it, you know. And Thank you, you're welcome. That's told you a bit outstanding. <laughs> no, and I'm grateful for it. We've known yeah. each other a long time, no. mate. You know, like I said, I'm not going to steer you somewhere you don't want to go or that we don't really yeah. need to cover. One thing I ask everybody who does the TT, because having I worked there in 22 with OMG with James, as you know, and it was a, a horrendous couple of weeks for uh, the reasons that we know. Um, but one thing that always fascinates me is the Glen Crutchery Road. <laughs> The atmosphere up there is absolutely electric, but that final point when you go into no man's land and you're paddling through and your tap man's there, he's got his hand on the shoulder. Describe those sort of 15 seconds to me. It's funny. They were the best. The worst for me was sitting on the grid in that line. You're off at 22. Bit of family around you, bit of team. Very aware of what you're about to do. 
we know the risks. We want to do it. You, you can't wait to get going. Do you know like when someone's passed away and you've went to say, I'm sorry for your loss and you nearly can't speak, you get trembly lip. I was getting that on the grid. Mates were like, my best mate with wingman, Laura hugging me. My mate, you, know, you get that high five. I get it at BSB, that good look and you go and win this. You get that from my mate Wesley. You really get it every time. TT, it was like, like, like I could see it in him. You, you, you go into this uh, mindset as a rider where you can read the nerves of everyone around you. I get it in Northwest too, and it's amazing. I, I got it last round at BSB. It is bloody powerful, and that's what caused the nerves at TT are escalated. You feed off everyone, and I remember sitting down. It's mad the graveyard's right behind you. It's just <laughs> nuts. Derek, Se Derek Seals off at 18. Me and Derek are sitting on the curve. Good lad, got on great one. Just sitting there. Well, well, good luck, good luck. Someone takes a photo, and you're like, it's like a smile. Like, no, when you've been smiling for half an hour, you can't <laughs> smile anymore. It's like, and you're like, I know what Derek's thinking, and Derek knows what I'm thinking. It is so powerful. Unbelievable. So to get to that bit you asked, to, by getting sidetracked, then you're left with your mechanic only, and he pushes you down, then you get into the bit where it's you, you start your bike and you paddle. The helmet is on, visor's down, you're buckled up, you're... All you're thinking to be doing is a tap with a green light. Go. The nerves are gone at that stage. And see, once you go, best feeling in the world. Best feeling in the world. Talk about a contrast. Worst feeling in the world, best feeling in the world. 30 seconds. On the difference. drop of a clutch. Unbelievable. Oh, gives me the whoo. <laughs> <laughs> it was powerful. I loved it. What was your favourite bit of the course? I will say, right, so everyone knows short circuit guys up the mountain, so it was most competitive uh, from... Gooseneck, back to the finish line, it was competitive. Um, the road race three bits, I would say, I really enjoyed Union Mills, and I enjoyed Greba, yeah. Wonderful. Thank you. You're welcome. That's, I mean, I, I can listen to, to riders talk about TT <laughs> It comes day. out, the, the passing, it, and it's like, and it's I'm so bubbling powerful. here. <laughs> but it is, it's so powerful. I know, it's the humour side. here, I feel like the adrenaline's going. That's why I do this, because it's the human uh, side of it, and that's what's so I important. I know people don't get to see us as, you know, the say as, as racers, and helmet down, and leathers on, and yeah. press conferences, and post-race, you know, thank my team, blah, 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 thank my sponsors, great race, yeah, enjoyed that fight. But we are people. I'm a human as much as you are. I'm you saying you're a dad, you're <laughs> a, a husband at some point in the not-too-distant. I'll go home and not get a bulligan off the missus for being away again this weekend. <laughs> I'm never at home at the minute. Oh, Nora's so good, she's... I couldn't do what I do with behind her, every great man. There's an Mate, even honestly, woman. Like this year, I've been in Thailand, I've been in Italy, I've been in Spain, I've been in Manchester a couple of times. Oh my word! And we have three kids, and look at me, I'm absolutely crackers. And my kids, the apples don't fall far from the tree. <laughs> so I have them for an hour, my own in the house. She's waiting her nails done. Text, are, you, are you nearly done yet? Like, <laughs> I can't do what she does. Fair play. To are you her, back yet? Um, so just keep on the road racing theme, just for one more event, the Northwest 200. <laughs> Love it. That place is childhood memories. I've said this many times, I don't want to sound like a broken record. My early memories are Granny and Granda's caravan in Jinbra Hill, turn, turn one at the beginning. Uh, bicycles with my brothers, uh, my cousin Lucy, who is now married to Cal Crutzlow. Yeah. Um, that was us, our wee group. We, we used to get some money gathered up and go to the Foster's chocolate stall and get your weighed out picking mixes and chocolates and honeycombs and all that stuff and spend the week flying about Barry's on the amusements, eating ice cream, watching my dad race. Then my dad retired and we went, and he, well, he used to hate after he retired walking through the paddock with him, and I know how my son feels. You can't move from A to B. I feel like David Beckham for that week, that week only. Just to stress that, I definitely don't compare myself <laughs> to David Beckham. And it, takes, it might take an hour from get the A to B in the yeah. paddock, or we need to go out for dinner an hour later, you've moved 10 people. I used to be like tugging it, come on, dad, come on. And I see Freddie doing it to me now, so I'm aware of that and I try to right, think of him. So a lot of childhood memories, uh, loads of special memories. Michael Dunlop winning the 250 race after Robert's death. Um, hairs in my arm, stand up, member of programmes at Black Hill. Oh, unbelievable. What's in Joey, David Jeffries, Moody, Simpson, Callum Ramsey, Woolsey Coulter. You know, all of them. Phil McCallum, Brian Reeds. Michael Rudder, I love Michael Rudder. Absolutely loved him. Um, played her. I remember it all. And then I made my debut and I fought for a win in my first year. Soon nearly won. And then I came back, I missed a year on the 
just weird. Just wanted to make sure it was definitely there to see my son to be born. And took a year out of road racing. Went in 17, first race was wet. I was like, oh, I do not want to win a wet race. One race, two, great battle with Sealy. 18, so grateful to come around in lap one, plus five seconds. I couldn't believe it. It never happens. I thought, <laughs> Andrew, he put boards me. I thought, he hasn't put the knot point in front of the five. I looked behind at your corner. I was like, this is a dream. I had to then concentrate to stay competitive. Um, great double, won a wet race in 19, something I never thought I would do. Uh, COVID came in 2021. Great fight with David Touch. You can remember everything. Race one of 22, uh, great fight with Todd. Coops pushed me hard in race two that year. And last year was a very difficult year. We struggled a lot with bike sell up Tuesday and Thursday. It was definitely the year for the guys to, to end my streak. And we turned it around on Saturday. Bike wasn't perfect. We went for a safe, friendly, stable bike because it wasn't. It was far from that in practice. But it wasn't nimble. But I'd just done enough. Uh, races were cut short, which is a bit annoying. But in race two, I had started to stretch some of it. was over a second ahead and red flag came out. So we were finding our stride. And that's eight in a row. The record in Superbikes is nine. Joey and Michael Rudder hold it jointly. Nine over their career. To think we've done eight consecutively is absolutely bananas. We, we can equal them consecutively. That's a dream. Equal them consecutively. If we could, beat, if we could go ten consecutively, that's a dream. But then you go ten, so you're going to want to win race three, aren't you? You may as well go 11. So... <laughs> I love it. It's so easy to be motivated by something that you have deep desire and passion for. I feel it now talking about it. I absolutely love the place. It's a holiday vibe. I could go up there in the winter and I feel alive when I'm there. Um, yeah, special, special event. And that being said, they, everyone expects me to win now. I get that. You cannot go to road racing. Look, I, I know what I want to do. you got to go out there on Tuesday. It mightn't feel right. And if it doesn't feel right with what's around you, you're, you're nowhere near it because you roll off a lot. You never know. We know what we can do. We need to go. Steady, steady. If we're there, we'll have a go. If it's not happening, it's not happening. But can we go 9, 10, 11? Of course we can. It's not going to be through lack of trying, is it? I love it. Five of my eight wins there. I've been on Ducati with PBM. So, like I say, it's connecting with this team. First Northwest win. First BSB win. First BSB podium. First uh, BSB pole position. First BSB uh, rostrum championship position. We just need now... First BSB championship, that is the sole goal, and to continue the streak at Northwest, and to come back in 2025 and retain the British Superbike Championship. And one lane people want to hold on to some, I get it, I hold on to it, like the Northwest streak. And I know when we get the BSB championship, we can get it this year. I think I will hold on to it the following year, but I just need to get it first. What do you need to do? I think everything I learned this year, from the mid-season, I learned a lot technically. Eugene Laverty helped a lot. Ducati's a bit funny, a bit different. Rear brake, you've got to use it in some special ways, not just the normal way of using a rear brake. That helps in many aspects, corner entry, edge grip, exit. From we applied that, we became very strong. That was a race to three of the brands hats in the middle of the year. I had a great race with Tommy. Tommy beat me, it was a phenomenal race. From then, we were the form rider. So I was missing that ingredient once I got that. Uh, continue my outlook in life. I'm happy, I'm very, you must think I'm like a broken record, but I am genuinely very grateful for what I have. I have an amazing family, three kids, a career that allows me to have a lifestyle that I wouldn't have had fixing fridges. I, I lead a normal lifestyle, but I can go on a few holidays a year and I can treat my kids. And I know we all say, don't spoil your kids, you're going to grow up and be sport pricks and all that, but come on, I love them the bits, I do anything for them. I have a team that the team can give me everything I need. I can give myself everything I need. I have the sponsors, the family, the support, even the supporters. You get something. I've won a lot of supporters over. And do you know what, mate? Just go and do what I've done this year. If we do that, continue our ways, we can definitely be British Superbike champion. Because I statistically, Harv always said to me, how can you say you're going to be champion when you've won like 1% of races? I was like, fuck, shut up. <laughs> He's so right. Well, last year I won 10 out of 33. So what's that, 30% of the race, pretty yeah. much. We podiumed in, I presume, well over 50%. I don't know how, how many it was. And it could have been a lot more. Could have been a lot more. I think it will be more this year. The early ground I lost, can't allow that to happen. No way. No way. I can't wait to see how it unfolds. I have two questions, just that we have. Yeah, but um, definitely, I got the, you definitely got, you're definitely on the timer now. We have our Patreon scheme. Okay. So we, are, we have um, 
some, some great supporters who pay to have early release on the show and oh, they nice. get to ask questions as nice well one. nice one um, so Craig Lowe thank you very much we've got two questions um, what was missing in 23 for you and what improvement does that bring for 24 technically uh, I just didn't understand how to ride the bike to its full potential until the midpoint of the season um, that then probably wasn't off to win the championship but with no buffer so what happened at Donington is not why I lost the championship that was what it was if I had been stronger earlier in the year I maybe could have afforded that to happen so we were strong we won at round one but we just weren't I just wasn't getting the magic out of the bike now we know how to get the magic out how would you get the magic out Glenn? <laughs> <laughs> come on Christian rides a Ducati you can, that's one thing I've learned I'm saying Len, I'm talking a lot but I'm not giving away the, no, the, wee, the wee details no the details are important they're staying in the back pocket um, was it always PBM for 24 or were there other tempting offers? Uh, there was uh, great offers. So like I'm quite a, an open book as such um, and without giving everything away, look, I, I had great conversations with Philip Neal, respect Philip hugely, um, local team. It would be a dream to win a championship with them. Yeah, it would be, but PBM feels very much in a non-complacent way, like a home for me. Um, they get me and I get them. There is certainly no complacency. They expect and I expect we deliver together. Um, America was appealing, attractive offer. Financially, it was good. Three kids, school. I loved doing school run. I'm there Monday morning, Monday afternoon, Tuesday morning, Tuesday afternoon. Drop him off, get a quick coffee, go to the gym. Just works, get home. After the sauna, get an hour with the girls. Down, pick Freddie up. Um, I spoke to Alan Gardner. You know, he actually texted me <laughs> and, and Alan will be cool. He wasn't giving anything away. You know, maybe was there ever an option with OMG for a third bike? I don't think so, you know. Uh, we, we had a brief conversation I, I really respect Alan I love how he's come in and been competitive and, and works well I um, love racing against him because they're good guys you know that was never really an option uh, the serious options were uh, Synetic um, and Rory then ended up taking uh, that ride um, Martin was a serious option but it was very early on Tim needed a commitment you know way like you're probably talking in Ryan Brands hats and do you know what why did I hang out and wait for the team? I love the team. I have faith in the team. I have huge respect for what they have all been through and how they've carried themselves in the, the difficult period of late. And the effort to go and to raise a million quid to run a superbike, one-man team on a Ducati. Two young people on the team manager have done that. I'm, I'm happy. I'm here because I wanted to be here. And... I feel want it here as well. It's a nice feeling. That's important. Yeah. And they want to win their 10th title and I want to win my first, so we may as well do it together. You might as well. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Nobody else you'd rather do it with. Yeah, no. It all started in PBM. It's not all ending at PBM no. right now because we have years left. Maybe it will end with PBM in years down the line. I don't know. Yep. Never know what the future holds. The world's gone mad and it could be... Oh. I could be racing in VR reality in five years' time. Be racing, you'd be racing. These gated, gated, these gated communities keep talking about <laughs> might not even be motorbike tracks. We'll be sitting on sofas racing each other. <laughs> I love what I do. I love talking about it. I love doing podcasts. People say, oh, podcasts are a nightmare, aren't they? Got to give your time up. Talk about something you love, mate. Depends who the host is. Talk about something you love with someone <laughs> that loves what you love. That's exactly you know right. It's great. That's what we do. Yeah. Very final question. Go for it. What's your best hire car story, Glenn? I took a, I took a huff last year, and Andrew reminded me we were on a motocross trip in Spain, and I'm the biggest raker in the world, but I was so tired. We were late for dinner. I think we'd been go karting after the motocross riding, and we come there around about, and my brother Graham's driving, and Graham, me, or Andy were all wired up in the head, <laughs> and I'd seen this round about during the trip. I think it was on the way to the outlet, one of the days, and it's got proper steep curves. You can't go over it. You're in Spain, you sort of feel invincible. It's mad, you go away in a different country and think you're invincible, but I, the police are probably beat the shit out of you out there. And uh, we tried to pass our mates in another car, Green goes straight over the roundabout, float four flat tyres, stuck at the side of the road, getting hungrier, getting hangry, and I took the huff, and the boys remind me of it. And do you know who saved the day, and, and God rest him, Ralph Torres, um, oh. passed away at TT last year. That guy pulled us out of so many holes, so he used to come and meet us in the motocross trip every year. Uh, he rang the hire car company, spoke the little, 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 don't know what he said. There was never a bill. They came and picked the hire car up. We didn't have a hire car anymore, but we were happy. We got away with it. Um, Connor Cummins had an issue with insurance one year when he got injured. Ralph sorted that out. I got injured a month later after Connor on a short circuit trip to Almeria. Um, I made a mistake with my insurance and took it out for the start one month later than the incident, not one day earlier. And then there was never a bill. 
Raul was phenomenal to us. So yeah, that 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 one that one hurt hard. So not a, you don't know, want to finish on a sad note, but no, no, no. that hire car story, he saved our bacon. We sat there with five, probably six of us in a five seater, four flat wheels, and I'm like, Graham, you yeah, and this, you fucking idiot, you idiot. But I'm the big. If it was me, you know, oh, one of them moments, it was. I hate being hungry, tired, and and uh, hungry. That's when you get the bad, Glenn. It's your worst thing, yeah. Glenn Irwin. Rock and roll. Cheers, thank, thank you, you so very much, much. Mike. One Hope you all enjoyed. Hope you enjoyed. Ladies and gentlemen, Glenn Irwin. I'm going to do my real job again. <laughs>